Hello, everyone. Welcome to our broadcast here on STARS Promo Print. Uh, thank you for joining us after a, a long NRF. It was nice to see so many faces at the booth interested in promo print. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't get to all of you, so we'd like to have this broadcast to, to talk a little bit more about it, talk about how promo print is an added value for not only our printers, but our, our resellers. Um, so today I have with me David Salisbury, the Director of Development here at STAR, and David's going to talk a little bit about promo print. Um, so without further ado, wasting your time on a Friday, uh, David, let's get into it. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Carl, and uh, welcome to wherever you have been today. And yes, uh, Eric was fantastic. We had such good response to Promo Print. Um, it's been a huge, huge success since we launched it in uh, August of 2018. So we really thought we'd uh, take this time to explain, you know, again, what it is. Um, and really... We want to make this as interactive as possible. Um, there's a lot of people on the call. Uh, if you have a question, please use the chat um, to, to send us a question. And uh, we'd love to have. If you know who Starter is uh, by now, then um, I don't know what I can do for you, but in a, in a Star is about the yes now, but you know we really are the transaction verification company. We're based out of uh, Japan. So you know, as a project, and the reason why I travel from Australia to US to be with you all. And certainly we have been very successful with your help um, in delivering printed technology to the modern point of sale world. In 2005, we launched the first version of promotion printing. It was uh, brought onto, onto, onto the planet with the launch of the Infostar. Um, at that time, it was very manual. Uh, it was limited to the TSP 100 series Certainly, we have been doing David. Um, motions on receipts. Yes. You you keep um breaking up a little. Oh, I'm so uh, sorry. I'm not sure if you could do anything. So certainly for us, um, we have been working on this type of technology for many years. Um, we have una been unable to deliver this type of solution for our iPad users and our Android users, and with Promo Print, we'll be able to change that. And also, we, this has been very manual. It's something you've had to edit at the actual store. So now we can manage it from the cloud. So it's a fact, right? Re retail is not dead. The receipt is not dead. And certainly, we see um, a growth. In fact, in 2018, it was Star Micronics America's best year ever. We had our best month in 2018, and we had our best year in 2018. So again, a big thank you to you guys, because without you, none of this would have been possible. And this is really our way to pay you guys back and you know, encourage you to generate revenue um, based on the, the hard work that you've done and putting those printers out there in, the, in this space. So what can the humble receipt printer do? What, what can we do to make a retailer a better retailer? Well, the fact of the matter is, across the Star Estate, we see close to 200 million transactions a day. So that's a lot of shoppers. That's a lot of shoppers touching receipts today. So yes, of course, it's important for the transaction, for financial verification, for expense management, but it's also a huge opportunity to market to those shoppers that are physically at the store. And taking a page out of Jack Dorsey's book, the uh, CEO of Twitter, why not turn that opportunity, that point of sale, really to a point of engagement? Let's change the mindset of how we communicate with our shoppers. Let's modernize everything and let's really capitalize on the fact that that hardware is already out there. 
like not it's not as old as the picture on the screen, but certainly it, it, we allow you to use a printer that's easily 10 years old for this. So we're not asking you to buy new hardware. We're not asking the retailer to buy new hardware. We're actually enabling the printers that have already been supplied by you to our market. And as Jamari explained, this is the natural progression in this business model. Historically, it's been a one, one and done. But if you provide services and solutions to your retailer, you're actually able to generate revenue from them on an ongoing basis. Typically, it's a smaller amount, but certainly you can get that, that revenue over a greater but longer period of time of the lifetime value. Best is trying to get it from upgrades and repairs and maintenance and things like that. What's interesting is that the typically we sit over in this little blue box, which is operational, and we supply POS hardware and their commerce software, whether it be their point of sale or the e-commerce software. A number of you probably participate in their um, financial side of their business, uh, managing their payment, doing their processing, things like that. But the reality is that there's a huge opportunity for revenue when you tap into the marketing side of your retailer's brain. We typically find the spend can, it can easily be four times their operational spend. And if you look at the numbers there quoted from the SBA, you imagine a retailer that's got $1 million in revenue. If they're spending 5% of their revenue, that's $50,000 a year that they're spending on advertising. Now, it's not always going to go to Primer Print. Of course, they have to manage their website and their social pages and their Yelp and all the other things that they have. But certainly, there's a huge amount of revenue to tap into if you convert your business model from, not, from being operational and marketing. So change from a, being a supplier to being a trusted and consultant and advisor and facilitator in their marketing experience. This is really the opportunity that we provide. So specifically, you can upgrade if they're using impact printers or old printers that, are, that, that need, re need replacing to make this work. You can exchange, perhaps you can exchange from another brand to Star. We would, we would definitely love that to happen. If you're, if you're visiting the customer to, in, uh, to install their promo print, why not upgrade the software while you're there? Why not update their point of sale software? And of course, you'll need to configure it and install the driver. For a cloud-controlled system to work, the devices and the PC have to be cloud-connected. So there's an opportunity to, to do rising cabling, provide internet access, whether it be cellular or 4G or Wi-Fi. There's a huge opportunity for your team to actually design the promotions for those retailers, actually create and design those promotions. Managing the schedule, deciding which promotion prints on which day, which time, which location. There's the community play. I would imagine that in your area, you have more than just one retailer. So if you have a retailer, let's say, for example, as a bicycle store or as a hairdresser, why not cross promote? We actually did this at, at our little booth at NRF, and uh, it was very well received. We were sending people from one store to the next simply by producing a coupon for the next store in the mall. And of course, you know, retailer by design is there to promote and offer products that they don't actually make. So why not get the brands involved, have them participate in the advertising of these um, on these receipts. So there's a lot of opportunities to participate in this ecosystem. Some of it's one time, obviously cabling and internet is one time, but certainly is recurring revenue. Um, the promotion design, schedule management, and managing the community there's a huge opportunity to actually participate in that revenue that is their marketing revenue. So again, it's all about using the receipt to create a personal message from the retailer directly to that shopper. We see a trend, and certainly email is that trend. Um, email is great if you can get it. I would challenge you that at the end of the transaction, is potentially not the best time to get it. I would certainly try and get it before they even walk in this, you know, before they, they, the transaction starts. Um, and not everyone is prepared to give up an email address. So if I would, I suggest that a retailer adopts both. They, op they, they offer an email receipt 
when they feel confident that that shopper is prepared to give it to them. And they certainly would offer a paper receipt for everybody else. So again, this, this is not replacing anything they're doing today. We're really enhancing the service that they provide today. So what is promo print? Really, it is pure marketing. And it's designed to advertise to the shopper when they're at the point of sale, at the cash wrap. It's really that simple. It's two components. There's promotion builder, which allows you to create the promotions. And there's the promotion scheduler, which allows you to determine where does the promotion go and when does the promotion valid for. One comment we had from our market is, our promotions look so good, it's hard to believe they actually come out of the printer. People think that that's pre-printed on the back or they're, or they're, they're already, already produced. Really, it's a case, the simple fact is these are printed after the receipt is printed. So the receipt prints, there's a cut, and then the promotion that's scheduled for that time prints. And we're not trying to change the world. What we're really saying to the retailer and, and you is, Let's just repurpose the message they already have, whether it be a blackboard at the front of the building, whether it be a tent card on the table, or a message that's up by the cash register. It's really about taking their current message and repurposing that message onto their receipt. You know, it could be the special of the day, it could be a call to action, it could be a call to their website, it could be now hiring, it's a very common one, but it could be any, anything message that they want to get across to their shopper. And because it's cloud connected, this is the beauty. Is you do, once it's installed, once it's configured, once it's set up, you never need visit the store again. You can 100% manage this completely offsite. You can be anywhere in the world and you can control and manage the promotions that your retailer is producing. Any questions, to Carl, so far? No, everything so far has been been clear how's the audio quality good much better now okay. yeah. i am i'm standing on the top of a table holding my phone up to the window <laughs> it should be good <laughs> technology huh so let's take let's take a deep dive into the actual technology itself and we only have an hour so i'm going to assume a couple of things let's take a demo i'm going to assume that you already know how to install a printer from star I think that uh, we've been able to achieve that quite successfully in our, our install base of some three or four million printers out there. And I'm also going to assume that you've already created an account. If you haven't created an account, we have many tutorials and there's a website at the link at the end of this presentation on how to create an account. So I'm going to skip those two things real quick. And I'm going to jump across to a live demonstration. This is going to go perfectly or not at all. So I'm on my Mac here. So, of course, I've created my account. I've logged in. I'm going to sign in real quick. My account. My favorite retailer. Excuse me, just two seconds. So, on my dashboard, we'll see that we have promo print available to me. I've been using Premier Print now for a while, and of course I used it during NRF. So the first thing I can see is the promotions that I printed during my time at NRF. So we were able to print some 80, 80 or so promotions at my little table that I had there. This is my library of promotions. These are the promotions I've created inside Promo Builder. And here is my scheduling. So this promotion here is allocated. It's, I've given it, called it my 20% off promotion. It's valid until the end of January, and I can see what devices it's connected to. We actually have a very simple um, training system inside. So I click on the dashboard, and it takes me through a tutorial of how to set it up. So I can go and take a look at the system. This is available for everybody who registers, so you can take a look at your, at your leisure. So step one is to create a promotion, of course. There's two ways. You can start from scratch, or you can actually start to edit. So 
some of the templates we have already created. So let's take a look at that. And this is not an exhaustive level of templates. If you have templates that you would like us to add and you have designs that you would like us to, to add, please send them to us and we'll add them to the template list if you can think of, an, of another experience. Maybe it's seasonal, maybe it's something that's completely missed out. In this case, I'm gonna start with a blank one. So the first thing we need to do is add a logo because remember that primary print is a separate piece of paper. So if you want to brand this, you need to brand the receipt, but you also need to brand the promotion. So I'm gonna upload my brands and images. The reason why we have this feature as well is that there may be a retailer's brand or a certain uh, graphic that they absolutely have to have. We allow that retailer and you to have a specific logo and brand image in their, in their library. So of course, I'm gonna be lazy in this case, and I'm gonna upload the star logo, monochrome image, save it to my library. Once it's in my library, it now becomes available to me for um, use in all my promotions. The really cool part about this is the ability to add other elements, text, shapes, icons. We have a large library of icons and we really want our, you guys to use those icons because we guarantee these icons will print perfectly. Barcodes, especially QR. QR codes are often difficult to put on receipts. We make that super easy. And uh, millenniums know, sorry, millennials know that there is value behind QR codes. So when you're finished, you create your promotion and you can add them to the library and that promotion now becomes stored in your library for future use. That is very simply and very easily how Promo Builder works. Think of it as Adobe for receipts or Canva for receipts. In Promotion Scheduler, you simply add a promotion to the schedule. You have two choices. You can either upload the promotion that you just created, or if you've created a promotion off-site. So let's say, for example, a retailer says, look, I don't want to do the design thing, but I'm happy to do the schedule thing by myself. So why don't you just email me the, the, the promotion? You can email them to the image. They can simply upload it from their PC, and they can then add that promotion to their schedule. So again, you can either create them in Promotion Builder or you can upload them from pre-made promotions that you've already done. It's a very, very important feature because if, for example, a customer is using Future Print and they wanna transition across to um, Promo Print, then they can simply use the promotion that they were using before. You see our schedule, what's the valid period, when should the promotion start? Between say 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. I wanna promote um, you know, a, a callback offer. What day should it produce? We really wanna avoid the CVS experience. So typically we would recommend that you know, no more than one or two, maybe three, but no, certainly no more than one or two. And that's what the priority is set. So of course, if you have two promotions, whichever one you set as one, that's the one that will print first. You can, you can turn it off and on for a day. So for example, if you have, you know, you want to pull people in, the retailer wants to pull people into their store on a Wednesday, you may be on Thursday, Friday, you would produce the callback promotion, but maybe no need to print it on Wednesday because they're already there. Once it's configured, in the case, if you, people are using two inch printers, AIMPOP, MC Print 2, it's a good idea to rotate the promotion so that it ends up landscape on the page. And this is the interesting bit, is determining which printer is going to receive that promotion. And we allow you to drill down to the individual printer. You can decide that this promotion is gonna be on this specific printer. So let's say, for example, a retailer has four or five printers in his store, he could actually have, for the same period of time, a different promotion on each printer. Now, where I think that works really well is that if you have a certain clerk using that printer, for that POS for that day, you could actually create a promotion that has that person's name on it. So you were served by David. David's the best installer that we have. When you come back to the store, make sure you come and see David. So I think that this allows the retailer and the clerks to create a very personal message to that shopper because it's based on point of sale that they're using. We allow you to test print it. Um, if you are doing for this for the first time, I certainly, and, and, you're, and as you learn, 
I certainly recommend that you do do test prints and just confirm with the retailer that they're happy with the image before you save it and, and, and push it out. Once you get confident with this, this is something you'll very rarely do. You can, you'll have the confidence to say, yes, I know what it looks like. I, I've done it before. I've only changed the date or the expiry date or the, or the URL or the QR code. I've only changed a minor thing. Maybe I tweaked their logo so I can do skip it. But certainly it's able to, you're able to push out live and have the printer print immediately that promotion. So once you're happy with it, this retailer's maybe signed off on it, agreed to it, um, confirmed it, checked the spelling three times, changed the phone number four times, you can then apply it and have that promotion go out and actually be stored in the library. And it's really, really that simple. The promotion is downloaded to their PC in the case of Windows, and it's downloaded to the printer in the case of the MC prints, I'll explain in a minute, but, and that's stored in their, in their printer. So it's not printed live, you only need an internet connection while you're actually doing all this. You don't need to worry about it. It's not printed live. So it doesn't slow down the point of sale at all. David, real quick, we have a question here. Um, Kevin King asks, can we change the name of the printer uh, when configuring for a specific sales clerk? Yes, that's a very good question. Thank you for that. Certainly you can. So in device management, and you'll see a lot of these printers in my device management, they're all offline because, of course, NRF is finished but you can see that I've, I've changed their names. So certainly giving them maybe store, you know, store 23, POS one, or, you know, uh, North, North store, South store, stuff like that. So yeah, it's very, very important to rename them, rename them because um, if you don't rename them, it's very confusing very quickly. Simple as that. Great, thank you. Very important thing to do, yeah. So that in a nutshell of this demonstration, there's two parts again. There's promo designer, which allows you to design the promotion, and there's promo schedule, which allows you to determine where those promotions go, when are they valid, when do they print. The trigger to print the promotion, of course, is a receipt. So if the printer prints a receipt, you will get a promotion at the end. You can see in this one, for example, I've been a bit cute. I've actually put my business card as one of the promotions. So you can really have some fun with this. And you know, I think that, to me, things like now hiring, free shipping, call to action. These are the things that are really, really important. So let's take a look at some examples of things that you could do with Chrome Print. So David, um, real quick, I don't know if you want to wait. They're, they're wondering what type of printers are compatible. Yes, I have that as a slide. I'll explain that in a few seconds. So of course, if you are changing your opening hours, maybe you have seasonal hours, maybe there's a vacation coming up, you want to let people know that you're opening on Martin Luther King Day, of course you would put your opening hours and your promotions for that period. And uh, again, you know, if you have an e-commerce site or your book, uh, appointment booking online or any of that sort of stuff or, or online ordering, this is a great opportunity to, to explain to your customer that you're open 24 hours a day. This is a big one. Uh, Kyle and I actually walked the Great America Mall uh, in Minneapolis a few months ago, and it was amazing how many retailers were actually advertising now hiring. In fact, it was it was the number one promotion that we saw. It was on chalk boards, it was on windows, it was on a sale. So let them know. Let them know that you are hiring. And again, if you're hiring in a store in Southern Carolina, that's the store you should be putting the promotion at. If you're not hiring in, in Los Angeles, then don't print it at that store. This is a good thing. And of course, as soon as the position is filled, you turned it off. If you printed that and handed that out, you'd have to call the store and say, that position's full, please throw those expensive pre-printed Vista print promotions away. So you're, this is truly on demand. You only need to print the exact number that you want. This is a big one. You've all seen these little feedback things on receipts. This happens to be one from, from Rubio's. You know, I don't know who's gonna read that, nobody. Why not make it cute? Just make it simple. Just make it so that the customer can very easily see how they are. And again, you can measure this in an old fashioned way, but there's plenty of companies who provide this as a, as a service. So if a retailer finds that this is a thing they wanna have, there's companies like True Rating, there's many of these companies that provide these services, which are much more expansive than just simply printing on receipts. So it's a great way to understand how valuable a retailer sees feedback. And 
Yelp's business model is 100% built on feedback. So it's a huge component to retail. If you have an online play, whether it be bookings or appointments or an actually e-commerce site or an eBay site or a Shopify site, then get them to promote that on their receipt. How does the shopper know unless the clerk tells them that they can actually shop 24-7 with that retailer? So these two promotions say exactly the same thing. Which one would you rather read? As simple as that. So they're very attractive, very eye-catching, and very relevant. This is a big one. When I interview a retailer, and I suggest you do the same thing, so when you interview your retailer and say, them, what's important? They might say, well, my Facebook page is really important, or my Instagram page is really important, I'm really proud of my print Pinterest feed. So allow them to create a conversation with their shopper but they had to have given away something to get in the first place. So again, it's about creating that, that interaction between the retailer and the shopper. To me, this is a big one. Lifetime value. Lifetime value in bicycles, guns, um, you know, any sort of store. It's really about lifetime value. So get the customer back to the store to create a great experience, whether it be training, it could be, a, uh, it could be a parade, it could be an event, it could be a ride day. Um, it could be a demonstration. Really use the brand and this opportunity to turn the store into an experiential location versus just simply a transactional location. So have them experience stuff. Don't just have them buy stuff. Seasonal, right? Get the brands involved again, but get, get, create seasonal promotions. As soon as that item is sold out, stop printing the promotion. If you have too much of one item in store A, one up heavily promote that item at store A. So really about getting the brands involved. To me, this is, a, and this is a really big one. If the point of sale solution that you, go, you provide has a mechanism to provide promotions, whether it be a negative dollar SKU, or as in this case here, it's an actual promo, promo code, put that promo code onto the promotion. Put the terms and conditions onto the promotion. So when they bring that promotion back, it's very easy to, it's very easy to scan the item back into the point of sale and to create that discount. So it could be a two, two for one, it could be 20% off, it could be a dollars off. Basically, whatever the point of sale can manage, make that visible on the promotion. This is not integration. This is simply configuration. I'm simply copying that data there into my promotion. So when it gets scanned by my barcode reader, it creates a discount code. This is really powerful. This is sort of, you know, Catalina for, for everybody. So it's really, really powerful operation. And many, many point of sales support this type of operation. Some are hidden, some are hard to find, some it's more obvious, but that I can't get to work. So we're very open to help you guys get your point of sale to create discount promotions. Dave, we do one. have, oh, so, excuse me. We, we do have a question, it's uh, kind of relevant. Um, okay. Can, can you create a conditional promotion uh, if a customer says didn't buy an appetizer with their meal and maybe we give them next time a, a discounted on an appetizer or a free app? Yeah, so so I have to say no. This is not what, what it's designed for. That's that's a very um very lineal um relationship between that transaction and the um thing. Because we're allowing um the reseller to be a custodian of this it's very important that we don't have visibility. And with great, great power becomes a great responsibility. So the promo print is 100% blind to the transaction. And it was done for a reason. The reason why it's done that is that we have the trust of the retailer because we don't have any visibility to the transaction. We don't know what's going on, and neither does the reseller. It's a very, very important component because you're managing their promotion. So just imagine like Vistaprint. Vistaprint's promoting the, the store but they're not, they don't know what you sold. So it's a very, very important differentiation to that point. So this, this certainly that is not what PromoPrint is designed to do. It's an advertising mechanism. It's not a um, loyalties me mechanism. It'd be nice, but certainly not, not, not at the space. If you're managing the st you know, 20 stores, you need to be very conscious of, of, your, of the responsibility that you have to those 20 stores. So again, in summary, it's really about receipt personalization, advertising, messaging, call to action, 
drive them online. It's really an advertising mechanism. It's not a loyalty program. There's plenty of excellent loyalty programs on the planet. Um, that is something that if retailers wants to mature to, by all means, go shopping and let's find a loyalty program specific for that retailer. So promo print is, a lot, is one of the new features of our suite of digital services. Um, this presentation is specifically about promo print. Um, so and that's what we covered. Okay, the big question, the technical piece, how does it work? So if you have your point of sale running on a Windows PC, Windows 7, 8, or 10, um, please understand that Windows 7 is pretty much end of life. So let's, let's take Windows 8 and Windows 10. Any TSP series, TSP 100, TSP 600, TSP 700, any of the TSP series will operate today and, produce, and can run promo print. So you can walk into a TSP 100 that you've sold 10 years ago, and you can download the new driver, and you can have promo print running today. That doesn't if matter what type of interface, David? It, there is one limitation. You cannot have a physical serial interface. So if it's a DB9 to DB25, and it's serial, um, I'm sorry, it's just too slow. We can't download the promotion fast enough. So we need to have parallel USB, Ethernet, Bluetooth, LAN, Wi-Fi. So anything, anything but serial. And of course, no impact printers, no SP500s, no SP700s, because simply, A, they'll look terrible, and B, the printer will just be too slow. So it needs to be thermal. Any TSP series, and it can be running um, escape pause, it can be running star mode, it just needs to be in a, um, a TSP series printer. On the other side, iOS, Mac, Android, our newly released MC Print 2 and MC Print 3 are 100% out of box promo print ready. So you can walk into a, a, a iOS or Android user and you'll be able to install the MC Print 2 and 3 and have them running. And the, the difference here is just a technical difference. In the case of Microsoft, the promotions are actually stored on the PC. In the case of iOS and Android, the promotions are actually stored on the printer. So how that differentiates is the, is the internet connection on Microsoft needs to be the PC. And in the case of the MC print, the internet connection is through the LAN connector of the printer. So there's a subtle difference, and that's why cabling and, and internet connection becomes important. But certainly the rule of thumb is if you have Windows GSP 100, or MC print, MC print. If you have anything else, MC print. So to confirm, David, uh, there may be some confusion. Um, can the TSP series work on iPad? The TSP 100 series, excuse me, the TSP 100 series will work on iPad as a printer. However, Chroma print will not work. So if you have an iPad and you're using TSP 100, unfortunately, you will need to update the printer to a MC Print 2. But in our case, it's a fortunate because we get to go and upgrade the printer and we get to go swap it out. Remember, the cost of a promotion is something like $1.50 per thousand. So if they're currently printing Vista Prints at 10 cents maybe each, um, the payback on the printer is going to be relatively short. So I think there's a very important uh, message here that says, Yes, you're going to, have to buy a new piece of hardware, but the savings that you will receive in delivering messages on your receipts is dramatically better than if you were producing flyers or um, other sorts of printed material. Just making sure we covered all the, there's a lot of technical questions, so I want to make sure we cover this. We'll come back to the slide during the Q&A at the end, because I think this is the one that everybody is the most, the most interested in. So Star Micronics has launched Promo Print since August. We see 10 or so retailers uh, registering a day. Um, we're very confident that there is an opportunity for you, the reseller, to participate in this program. We're offering up basically our marketing department to you. Our entire marketing and sales department is on, available to you. Um, we want to do regular webinars. If we have a request to do one in Spanish, we're happy to do one in Spanish. I do not speak Spanish, it will not be me. Um, 
And I really think that we're happy to do one-on-one one-on-one training. We're happy to come and visit you. And we really want to help you guys be great promo print um, advocates because there is revenue in this for you. So we're going to help you with promotions if you need them, some design work if you need them. We're happy to do a press release with you. We'll help you with blog material about why, why promoting on receipts is such an important thing to do. Most importantly, we want to make you famous. We want to make your customers famous. So if you're a retailer using the service, we're happy to promote them and you across our um, vast media network. Also help, happy to help you with email content. So if you are creating you know, constant contact or MailChimp to your customer base, we're very happy to help you with that content and create a very message for you. We also want to create a situation where the, the 25 or so thousand retailers that come to our website every month can actually see you as a promo print partner. So if they're have it struggling to create promotions or they'd rather be making muffins or cutting hair than doing this, um, then they would see you as a trusted advisor and someone that can actually help them do it, at, of course, at a fee. And then again, you know, I think the big one for me is the redemption, configuring a point of sale on how to do redemption. So we're happy to train you if you want us to create videos for you that you can give to the retailer on how to make this work and how to manage it, we're happy to do that as well. So really, I think that although we didn't call it coupon print, it is a big component of retail is discounting. So I think we shouldn't ignore it. And uh, so I think certainly we would help you um, to create that configuration. And that is the only integration required. Again, as I said, if the printer prints from your point of sale, a promotion will come out. You do not need to change the point of sale application at all. It's a very, very important differentiation. I'm very happy to announce that uh, Intuit QuickBooks has embraced Promo Print and they are starting to market to their retailers now that the, and they're obviously marketing their, um, their coupon print peak component. But yeah, certainly QuickBooks has fully embraced Promo Print and uh, we're rolling this out. So of course, as you can appreciate, they have a very large installed base of retailers. So we should, be, we should get some very interesting feedback from them. So that's, a, that's great news. So I think that's it. I think we're pretty much um, about a few minutes to go. So we've got plenty of time to do some Q&A. Um, I really want to make sure that we're doing this for you. You know, we really want your feedback. We really want you to work with us. Um, it all starts at promoprint.com. Um, you know, it's promo print without the I. And it's really, you know, give us some feedback. And as you use the service, give us some feedback. If there's services and features that you want us to use, to implement, tell us. If there's templates you want us to create, tell us. If there's training material that you want us to produce, make it easy to understand, then tell us that as well. If there's feedback in the usage, tell us. If there's a fantastic promotion that you've think that would, we could add to the templates. Share that with us and let's make that template available to everybody. Because there really is a great community operation here where we create this fantastic community of, of retailers advertising to shoppers using their receipt printer, which they've already invested in or are going to invest in as that product. So we really want to make this for you, um, even more so than for us. Obviously, interest in that selling hardware, but you have to understand we have an aid link some 2 million printers that are already out there um, to have the service. And we don't make any money from that. From us to you, it's 100% free. So we're doing this because we feel that there's a great opportunity to trans transition a retailer from a transactional retailer to a marketing retailer. And if you participate in that, you can tap into that retailer's mindset and take revenue from him in terms of his marketing presence versus his simple operation and financial presence. So, Carl, I'm going to open that up to um, questions. If you have more questions coming in, then please let's let's discuss them. Yeah. So we had one sitting here for uh, a little while. Um, can a retailer manage their own promotions? I would. I would they guess can. they mean yeah. Yep. So the print it, again, we use a couple of ways to do that. One is that if you both want to do it, you would share the same account. Um, a retailer can do it simply on their own. We have many hundreds of retailers using it now um, by themselves. Um, what I see is that the savvy retailer is, is probably going to be capable of doing this themselves, and you know, make sure they've got the right infrastructure, make sure it's working, and that's an opportunity for a one-off hardware sale. 
So this is not going to work for everybody, but certainly there is a, not, a lot of retailers who are too busy doing their primary job um, and really would rather have someone else do it for them. You know, again, a lot of these retailers use third-party companies for their website design or the email marketing or the newsletters. So you can imagine that they're going to want a third party to, to take care of this as well. Okay. We have kind of a, a very nice question here. Um, if a retailer wants to use promo print, but they have a TMT 88, theoretically they can replace the Epson TMT 88 with the SP, uh, TSP 100 and use promo print. Correct. Right? Correct. <laughs> that is a, that's a great opportunity. So certainly I have, this is not my first day in the rodeo. I have done this pro I have done this for many, many years in terms of future print technology. And I have walked into retailers and I have actually swapped out brand new TMT 88s and uh, put staff printers in place because of the service. I had a great conversation with the CTO of Taco John's over in Cheyenne, near Denver. And um, you know, he said to me, to do this, all I have to do is swap out my printers. You know, it's you gotta respect that that the retailer is you know, somewhat in jail with his POS software. He's certainly married to his POS hardware, you know, but he has a bit of a differential relationship to his printer. It's, you know, in his mind, it's just a printer. So if it can add value and generate revenue or save him money, and it's, you know, a TS100, what is, you know, $200 odd, then what's the barrier, right? And of course, Gerald, you will receive a copy of the webinar. No, no question. We're happy to do that. Kevin's got a long that one. Is, yeah, that's an interesting point. There, he has. Um, so he he says that if you configured one of our one printer in the restaurant mm -hmm. to train the wait staff and print promotions and receipts, um, if you wanted to do a free appetizer for the next meal, you just sell a separate printer. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, again, the, the point here is that, you know, we're not going to stop you putting more printers in there. Um, but, you know, I think that the goal here is, is think about, you know, interview the reseller, find out what his pain point is, find out what's hurting them. Is it, is it, you know, his social sites crashing? You just invested in, a, in an e-commerce site. It's not working. You know, Kyle, I had a, had a retailer and they, their inventory changes so quickly that they actually do FaceTime shopping. They actually do one-on-one -on -one FaceTime shopping with a shopper. So how do they promote that? It's on their website, but no one in the store knows. The clerks are not telling the shoppers, right? So their promo print was a call to action with a phone number on how to do FaceTime shopping at retailers. So take this opportunity to mix things up because the penalty for failure here is zero. It's not like you invested thousands of dollars in pre-printed promotions and you have to hand them out no matter what. Um, mix it up. You know, if, if it's working, then continue. If it's not working, do something else. The penalty for failure here is zero because there's no wastage. You only print the number you need. But certainly, we're open to, to innovative ways to use this. You know, one of the other things we, we saw is that the bar for the last hour was printing adverts for Uber. You know, they're trying to get, to get their drunk drivers home safe. So, again, you know, cross-promoting. We saw a mobile phone store printing out promotions for the Pizza Hut just down the road. So, again, you know, the community concept. So it's really a case of, of having some fun with this, making it interactive as much as possible with you and the retailer so that you become a trusted advisor and consultant for that retailer and provide them exactly what they want for their marketing marketing dollars, you know? Yeah. So um, I think I have a question that is kind of relevant on everybody's mind is um, if we already have a loyalty program or something similar, how would that integrate into promo print? So I see promo print as being the kickoff. I see promo print as being the um, the starting point. So again, you know, if you're the owner operator, of course you're going to be front and center. You're going to tell the, the shopper everything you want them to hear. But it's not always possible. There's a queue going out the door and things like that, and you have clerks that clerks that don't quite do what you want them to do. So the good thing about this is that. Promo print doesn't lie, and and the muscle memory of the clerk says whatever comes out of this printer, hand to the shopper. So I would use the promotion as a starting point to say, hey, we have a loyalty program. Why don't you sign up now? Put a URL or a short code or a QR code. So the way that it enhances your your online play, whether that be social or couponing or um, sorry loyalty or any of that sort of stuff, 
um, appointments is to use promo print as a kickoff to start the thing from to, to start the thing happening. All right. There was a question way back. Just to confirm, yes, Gerald, for sure. TSP, TSP series cannot work with iPads. You will need to replace the printer with an MC Print 3 or 2 to have this work on an iPad. So if, say, the, the person has a Windows POS system and they want to create the promotions on an iPad, can they do that? Oh, that is no problem. From... So again, we have, you know, it's it's Chrome, right? So, you know, it's certainly um, you can create the promotion on an iPad. I personally, you know, there's no mouse on an iPad, right? So maybe it's easier to use uh, to create promotions on a, on a desktop PC. But certainly the scheduler, you could very easily manage the schedule on like that. That's just easy. This is click and click and click and push. So certainly, um, I would I would say iPad 100% scheduler um, in terms of design. If you if you've got small fingers, then for sure do the design on like that. Okay. Um, so Gerald has a question there about how many um, promotions can be run on, say, a single location or a single printer. What's the limitation? Yes. The, the number, the magical number is 16. So um, we allow you to have, and this is just phase one, because obviously we're running this for free, so we need, we, we can't go crazy on day one. But certainly we have a we have an arbitrary limitation right now. Um, the number of printers on your account is unlimited. The number of active promotions at any one time is 16, and the number of promotions that can be in your library is is 20. Um, the number of promotions that a single printer can store is 16. So um, you know that's and we have a 30 minute um uh segment so that's you know one promotion every half hour for eight days the reality is most of our people run the promotions for you know um, a period of time so we see a lot of customers who are using promotions for, for a week or so we don't typically see people chopping and changing by the hour but certainly there are some arbitrary limits and there are some technical limits but the magic number is about 16. you can manage you can manage without too much effort 16 and the reason why we put that limit is one is, is is technical, but the main reason is account can get very unwieldy if you have too many people on, on, on one account. So you would not run a thousand retailers on one account. You would have a number of accounts across those retailers. So what industries, David, are, are best for promo print? Where do we where should we target these these sales? Yeah, I, I spent the last four months traveling to a lot of verticals. Um, certainly, I think the one for me is high lifetime value. Certainly, if the shopper, if a retailer is, is you know, like, okay, I'll use a, I'm a bicycle nut, so let's use that one. You know, selling the bicycle is, is you know, the tough part because they're always trying to get you on the best price and sometimes an emotional spend. But things like helmets and, and um, bicycle pumps and parts and repairs, that's where the lifetime value is. So certainly any retailer, that wants to create a long lifetime value, um, and certainly, uh, certainly hospitality. I mean, that's a big one because you have such a high traffic. So the cost for per per click, if you like, or cost cost per impression, is very very low um, across a large installed base. So certainly those two. Um, where a retailer has a high degree of email account anyway. So let's say for example it's a salon, probably promo print is not going to work very well because you've already got 90%, 95% email addresses anyway, and a lot of walk-in customers. So appointment-based stuff is maybe not, but certainly in those industries, I would look at the brands. I would get my brands and my suppliers involved, whether it be hair care or, or, or that sort of stuff. So again, it depends. you really have to um, interview the retailer to understand what their pain point is and what they, and take a look at their current marketing. I mean, certainly any vertical is hiring, right? So they're now hiring one, doesn't matter what vertical you're in, you're going to use it, but certainly we see things like long lifetime, high lifetime value, mobile phone stores. Um, that's a recurring, you know, uh, visits from people getting recharge cards, um, gun stores, you know, obviously, you know, for consumable areas, bullets, pet stores, consumable of course is food, bicycle stores, consumable of course is is um, the other. The lifetime value is huge in, in those type of industries. We have one here that I, I'm not sure if it is a question, but I'll, I'll phrase it like a question. Um, this from Robert? Yeah. 
That's a very good question, Robert. So yes, that's 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 up to the pause. So if the pause has a conditional component to it, so I'm going to use the, the QuickBooks example. So in this particular case, they've they've got conditions to it. Remember, we're just printing the barcode. So you would obviously marry the conditions. You would say you're limited to, you know, people wearing yellow shirts on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. who walk in with a dog and a leash, right? So the conditions you set. Are a, are a reflection of the point of sale. So the point of sale determines the condition, and you're just simply re, 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 re messaging that onto the promotion. So in that case, it's point of sale configuration first, promotion design second. Okay. I don't see much more coming through, but I have a pretty important one that, that, um, we should get out of the way here and get get to reiterate. Um, besides selling new printers, what what value does this have for our resellers? How do they make more money? I think this is a I think this is a I think this is you know a very important slide as well. Okay, the, the the key point here is that yes, if you have an existing printer, it will work. If that existing POS system has an internet it will work today. So in that case, you're not going to get money from much money from the upgrade. It's already a T three hundred. You're not going to get money from the exchange. Maybe while you're there, you'll notice something else needs changing. The payment terminal needs updating, or some new software, or NFC compatibility, or they're not the EMV compliant. Um, if the POS is already connected to the internet, well then of course you're not going to get the cabling business. So in that case, if it's an existing printer and it's not a new sale then really the revenue comes from being the consultant, designing the promotion, helping them schedule it, and obviously creating the community the community concept around it where, you, where you're talking to other retailers in your street that you are working with um, in your suburb, in your city, that you know could well be cross-promoting this product. So maybe, maybe you've got a really good retailer in a vertical that you're very familiar with, but two doors down, there's a retailer selling in a vertical that you don't have a good relationship with, but it is a, there is a point of sale there and there is a staff printer there why not connect that? So this is where you can get your, your sales teams a little bit out of the comfort zone. If they're very specific in selling into restaurants, but there's a hardware store, dry cleaner, and you know sports store between your house and your office and their, and their location, why not call on them? I mean, there's no as long as it's a staff printer and you can install it, but you know how to do that, um, get, and get that work in as well. So I think the opportunity here is to, re is to broaden your reach because you're not, being asked to change their point of sale, you're not. Then I'm going to ask you, well, how do I get? How do I run my business? You're just managing their promotion. So the big opportunity here is go outside your comfort zone and actually talk to retailers who you would typically have ignored. We have another question here from Gerald that I'm not sure if we have time to deep dive into, but um, can we add fonts? To the promotions yeah, so, or so, Joe. Just... The, the simple, sim there's two answers to this question. First one is that you can upload any promotion you like. So you can go into any desktop publisher and you can create any any design of out of anything. Save it as a PNG and then upload it to um, the promotion. If you have a specific message that you want to create, you can um, upload just that that text line as an image, as a graphic. So it would become like a logo. And certainly, if there's a font that you know, everybody wants to have, then we would add it to the to the library. Um, our goal was to make the fonts readable and you know print well. So nothing smaller than six point. You know, watch watch your service and stuff like that. So um, again, please respect. You're operating on a receipt printer, not a 1200 you know DPI laser printer. So just make sure that the the, the end result is is perfect. But certainly, if, a, if the retailer is a custom font, um, then upload either upload the entire promotion as as an image or upload the piece that they want as an image inside from a promo builder. We have a, another very good question here. What is the future roadmap for a promo print? It's a good question. So for us, um, it's, you know, this is cloud driven. So of course we can manage it in the cloud. I think for us is that we see opportunities um, you know, really to create the community, really to create the situation where, you know, the downtown Denver Association, maybe the maybe the, the business community 
or the mall becomes this this big parent community. So whereby, you know, you guys are you you are actually actually becoming like your town's trusted advisor for the whole town, not just for the ten, you know, not just not just for the percentage of retailers that you currently currently have. So our our long term goal is that you know we almost we almost take over the whole town together. You know, we're not there. We can't. We're only star. We're only a small team. We can't be everywhere. That's why. That's why we have resellers, and that's why you guys are so critical to our business. Um, is you know to to create that that um, community concept for Promo Print, and of course feedback from you. If you feel that there's a feature that really could benefit you or benefit the retailer, then tell us what that feature is and give us that feedback so we can put that into the roadmap. So we're building this for you. We we you know we're really building this for you guys. So tell us what you want. So I think we've got a few minutes to go. I'm happy to take a few more questions. Um, I think this has been really um, productive. And certainly, you know, the, the big thing here is um, we really want you guys to, to embrace promo print. Um, we have worked very hard. I think, this is, you know, we spent many millions of dollars building this. And we really wanted to um, have you guys help us, you know, transition our retailers and yourselves from being that operational um, consultant to being that marketing consultant. There's a huge amount of money spent. I don't know, the numbers are just staggering, but you know, the, the, the revenue spent in marketing in hospitality, for example, is just staggering. And I think that's the big opportunity that we're offering here. We, you know, we can really turn this sort of stuff, you know, Office Depot and, and CVS and this sort of stuff has been the big guy's domain. We're bringing this, this down into the really the small business. You can have a mom and pop producing promotions just like the big guys. I think this is a real game changer. And I have a personal interest in of course because I, I invented it, but I mean certainly we we are very very um and that's why we have this we're gonna help you and train you and support you and really help you guys deliver the solution. So you know we, we now work for you. I think that's all the questions we have. David might be a good point to end. Yep. Um, so thank you everybody Again, for you attending. Know, Go ahead. Oh, no, sorry. Okay. So thank you for attending. We'll be sending out uh, an email shortly uh, with the full recording that you can review and uh, look through again. If you have any questions or comments, please, we're, we're looking for feedback um, on, on promo print, good, bad, positive, anything, really. Um, but we just, like David said, we want to empower you guys to do the best you can. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you all for spending time with us today. And uh, again, I'm, I'm fully available to everybody. If you have any questions whatsoever, just certainly give, give, me, give me a shout out. I'm pretty easy to find on LinkedIn. So. I'm, I'm, I'm always there. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Bye, everyone.